Hello. Hi. So it is currently uh, Monday the 17th of January 2021. 2021? No, 2022. Mm, what? And it is the night before surgery. I am scared. Yeah, I'm going in to the hospital tomorrow to have a hysteroscopy. It's probably backwards. Um, as an outpatient, um, genuinely quite frightened with the hysteroscopy with the side order of a coil, possibly. Which, if you have ever watched any of my hormone diaries videos before, I said I would never do again because I've done a video about this in the past and I'll link it, but um, it went my first coil when I was like. 23, 24, went horribly wrong. Basically, a lot of things have led up to this. A lot of, um, there's been a, there's been a lot of complications with my womb. And, um, I had an implant put in last year. I had an implant put in to try and help with, um, some really bad endometriosis cramps and bleeding. And, uh, it didn't work. If you even consider doing anything, they want to, uh, the doctors and the they want to give me a hysteroscopy, which is this, um, which is a camera inside of my womb, a bit like a colonoscopy, but for the vagina. Um, and then while they're there, depending on what they see, what condition my womb is in, what may or may not be wrong because they can't quite see stuff on an ultrasound. Um, and depending on my consent at the time, I will be having a coil fitted for the second time, this time under surgery protocols, um, under local anaesthetic, not general, and placing it properly because they think it might not have been placed properly the first time around because it was placed with an ultrasound scan afterwards, not a camera. And I'm really nervous about that. Basically, I'm nervous. I mean, it's like two layers. I'm nervous about this, which is going to be scary because any it's classed as a minor surgery a minor procedure in the nhs world they will from what i know give me a local anesthetic in the wall of my vagina and then go up into the uterus with the camera um that is classed as a minor procedure having talked to others who have had it it's not minor it's pretty major and um hurts a lot there's a lot of side effects and if you take on board the fact I have EDS and a heart condition that complicates any minor surgery into a major surgery basically. Um, there's a chance of heavy bleeding because I'm on a blood thinner every day of my life um, practically because uh, I have my heart condition. Um, there is the issue of infection which will be much higher because I have immune system problems. There is the risk of pretty much everything um and then you have the risk of the coil which went terribly wrong last time and caused a like bonkers amount of pain it had to come out within three days and i am extremely frightened um and i've pre-upped the best i can to the best of my ability i'm packing a bag to go for the possible like I don't know, four hours or whatever, or two hours that I'm going to be in there as an outpatient, but I'm also packing an emergency bag um, for if I have to be kept in because I'm also dealing with severe sugar level problems at the moment and an argument about possible diabetes. So if I have a hypo, which is a dramatic drop in blood sugar level while I'm there and the doctors see it, I have been known to have been kept in when that's happened before. Um, so I'm also packing an emergency bag, so if I have to stay in for like another 12 hours while they try and get my hypos under control. I can't say I'm doing this bravely. I am frightened. I still haven't made a decision about the coil. That's a decision. It's it's in the procedure that's going to happen, but I can choose on the day tomorrow not to have it done because it's a very big risk to my health. And I need to know the procedure of getting it taken out of me straight away before I agree to let them put it in me. Hoping I get an early night.
You know those things where you don't know whether you should agree to them? Like the hysteroscopy, I have to agree to it. We need to know what's going on inside my womb. There's a lot of bleeding, there's a lot of cramping, there's a lot of unexplained symptoms that just don't make sense, so they need a proper look inside my womb to make sure nothing's wrong. It's the coil that has me stumped. Here goes. I'm going to try and get some sleep, which probably won't happen, but we can try. See you on the other side. Possibly. I'm going to vlog as I go, I guess. <laughs> Ow. Oh, sweet Jesus. How is this my life? <sighs> Recovery day one. It's now Wednesday the... I want to say 19th. Ow. Just ow. Recovery's gonna be slow, I think. I'm in a lot of pain today. I haven't sort of checked the damage yet, but it really hurts. Um, yeah. A lot of lying down, I think. Oh, I'm so tired. A lot of pain. I need to go and find a cup of tea. Yes. I'm going to be waddling a lot today, I think. This, this, it's, a new, it's a new kind of walking stance taken. It's called the waddle. I shouldn't laugh. That hurts too. I really take tea. Why is the kettle so far away? Day two of recovery. Um, ow, still, the pain levels are not good. Um, the sort of mm, spreading as well, because I think I've been kind of hunched up a lot and sort of, you know, tensing the muscles. So the muscles are really starting to get annoyed with me now. I uh, haven't moved much at all because it really hurts too. There's a lot of bruising and swelling from what I can tell. Uh, fortunately, the um, procedure seems to have kicked off an almighty period, which isn't helping. I don't know, like I was due on anyway, so I think it's just kicked it off. And um, if you are grossed out by periodness I'm gonna skip this bit but um it's not just blood there's like fiber and tissue and you know not nice things being passed and um it really hurts so I feel really weak and eating's an issue like because I'm so tired my stomach doesn't really want to digest meals so I'm just smacking them up I can get down me at the time, but that's affected my sugar level quite a lot. So I keep on having like close to hypoglycemic attacks. Not quite. I think I've managed to catch like two as they go and managed to get a, like a cup of tea in me before. They really kick off, but it's been close. Oh, it's just like, it's just exhausting. It's gonna be slow, but yeah, everything just hurts. I'd very much less like to sleep through the rest of this. Fingers crossed for tomorrow. Day three, post procedure slash surgery slash vagina invasion. <laughs> it's Thursday. The only reason I know it's Thursday is because the bin men are coming around right now. So if you hear a lot of noise, it's them. Uh, I slept a bit better last night. That was that was pleasant. Quite enjoyed the sleep, thank you. It has a lot to do with the fact that I had some CBD gummies. Um, I've been trying them out to see if they help. They've helped the like low grade muscle pain a bit, like from when I've been scrunched up. Um, I'm not sure if they're, they're. I think they're helping my brain kind of quiet down a bit as well. It took ages to like research and find one that I could possibly digest because most of them in gummy form are just full of sugar and so is this one but just less sugar. 
I'll, um, I'll link it down below if you're interested. Um, but yeah, more sleep, like the sleep. Uh, it is possibly attempt a wash day. Uh, I want to say it's attempt a shower day, but I'm not that ambitious. So I think it's going to be a down and dirty strip wash, but uh, I will be happy to get gunk off of me as soon as possible. So see if I survive that or I could just continue laying here because, ow, we'll see how it goes. Day three of recovery. Greetings from a very zitty face. Uh, it is now, I want to say Friday, but I think it might be Saturday. What happened to Friday? Oh, who knows? So, Saturday, yeah, managed to have a wash. Was that yesterday? Time is kind of fuzzy. So that's a thing that's happening. Yeah, managed to have a wash. There's 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 a lot of bruising. Um, I've realized I haven't really said what happened. Um it didn't go to plan, basically. Um I'm trying to think of a way of saying this because it's triggered some past trauma and it's caused some trauma. So I'm trying, like, I know I need to feel the emotions, but they're, like, coming in waves from what happened, so I haven't really, like, thought of how to talk about it without spending half an hour trying to overanalyze everything. But basically, I got there, and the doctor that was going to do the operation procedure, it's called both things, apparently, um, was not the doctor I talked to a couple of months ago. Uh, the doctor was switched on me. So the doctor I spent a lot of time with talking about pain relief and pain management and how this was going to be done very carefully and dealing with all my past medical traumas and everything wasn't there. And although I remember her writing it all down, this doctor, who is a very nice doctor by the way, but this doctor just, I guess, hadn't read that. Um, so we had a long conversation before the procedure about what we we're going to do about the coil and the decision was that it was going to have one put in but um i would then be put into the waiting area or the recovery room well he did other procedures and if after an hour i was in a terrific amount of pain still or i was uncomfortable or i wanted it out he would then remove the coil so i wouldn't be going home with the coil that was causing me a lot of, you know, aggro. So I agreed to the coil on under those circumstances. Um, the, I've forgotten the name of the procedure, but the procedure happened where a coil was put inside me. That wasn't too bad for me. Because it wasn't too bad, I didn't notice. I mean, bearing in mind, I've been in a hospital for about half an hour at this point. I have, uh, I get overly stimulated very quickly, so light, noise, sound, trying to understand what the doctor's saying and respond to him. Like, that's drained me of all my responses and all my energy. So, as they are doing the procedure, I realised, hang on, we haven't talked about, whoa, that hurts. I haven't mentioned pain meds and, and pain relief, and neither has he. He hasn't mentioned it once. He hasn't said, would you like some pain relief? This is what we can offer you. How would you like to do this? He's just gone ahead and done the procedure without local anaesthetic, without gas and air, without any mention of anything. And it isn't until I'm like in the procedure that I realise, <sighs> but because the hysteroscopy, that's the word, for me, it wasn't too bad. It was a tube with water going inside me. It fills up my womb and then a camera goes in and it was like low grade cramps. So I didn't feel too bad. So I was just like, okay, well, it's happening now. And if he's not putting a speculum in, I'm not going to need pain relief. So I kind of just breathed through it and thought, I'll have to have a conversation in my next appointment of how this went wrong and how I wasn't given pain relief and how it wasn't mentioned because this isn't right. But I gripped my teeth and I put through it and said, well, it'd be over in a minute. But what I hadn't remembered because right now I'm up, I've got my legs akimbo, something very 
weird is happening to me. There's bright lights. There's a nurse talking to me. I'm so overstimulated and I don't know what's going on. I'm just like, I've just got to lie here and breathe through this. I forgot that they're about to put a coil in. And he says, do you want me to put it in? And I just go, yeah, because at this point I've already agreed when I was sat down so I don't have to make decisions while I'm in the procedure chair. Again, no painkillers. It hasn't dawned on me. I mean, it says on the paperwork, please take painkillers before you come. But I'm a human who can't ingest painkillers. They just don't work with me. Paracetamol, aspirin, cocodamol, all those things, they're not a thing. Ibuprofen, can't do it. I vomit heavily and I just get side effects. They don't work. Um, so they go to put the coil in and I'm just like, I should shut down. The amount of pain, I can't. I don't want to talk about it because I don't, I can feel myself getting triggered. Like I have vaginosis because of past medical trauma. This is why the speculum was huge. The, there was no pain relief offered, nothing, just poof. Yeah, I don't want to go into that. I'm not ready. I can't, I don't even know how. So there's a lot of pain and um, the coil was placed and he came out and he said, how are you feeling? And I'm just like, I couldn't talk. I had this overwhelming nausea um, from the pain of the coil. Um, I could feel the, it's like, it's like two different pains. I would say there was a level of two different pains. There was a the pain of the procedure and the bruising caused or the trauma caused and it, 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 it ached, but it wasn't. But then you had the sharp pain of the coil now it's really difficult to describe and I've kind of talked to a few people and the best way I know how to describe it is that it's like being poisoned. Um, it's like a uranium rod is in your, your womb and it's sharp and it's stabbing you and then pain starts to radiate out in like waves vroom, 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 and it's just, it it just spreads and... I was helped by the nurse back into my clothes because I was feeling really faint and really sick and put back in my wheelchair and taken into the uh, the waiting room, the, the recovery room, I suppose. Um, and my friend came in with me and that's where the um, the little bit of footage was, was taken of me bent over in my wheelchair. And I was trying to laugh. I mean, in that video, I'm laughing a little bit, but that's because my... My response to trauma, my response to anything overwhelming is to laugh. Because my brain just goes, are you kidding, right? This is insane. Like, it's not possible to be in this much pain. This is just, this has to be a, this has to be a joke. And so my trigger response or my trauma response is laughter. I've learned this like a while ago, especially when I was in hospital, like years ago, somebody told me something dramatic, I'd laugh in their face. Um, so my trigger response is laughing. So I'm laughing, but it's not. It's because I'm so overwhelmed and scared. I mean, this pain was just growing and it was shooting down my legs and shooting upwards and I didn't want to eat, I didn't want to drink. And I recognised it. This is what happened last time. Like, I didn't eat or drink for like three days the last time I had a, a coil put in because I couldn't because all you can film is this overwhelming pain and poison going through your body. And I started getting pins and needles down my legs. I was trying to like wiggle my toes and I could barely move them. I like, like, and I've had partial paralysis before because of medication going wrong. And it felt like that was happening. I was just like, I'm on, I can't, I'm, my legs are gonna go soon. I'm starting to not be able to feel things. And I just bent over and breathed for about 20 minutes of just, I can get through this, this will pass, this will pass. And it wasn't passing, it was just getting worse and worse. And so the doctor came in after doing one more procedure on somebody else and asked how I was because the nurses I think had mentioned to him that she she just hasn't moved. She's bent over. I was bent over my wheelchair and I didn't friggin' move for half for twenty minutes. I'm just breathing. He came in and said, How are you? I said, I'm really sorry, it's getting worse. It's just building and building and getting so much worse. And he did say, Do you think it's because you're triggered from the last time? And I'm just like, I don't know if I am triggered from the last time or not, either way it hurts. He's just like, Do you want it out? And it's like I think we're gonna have to. I don't. I, I can't go home like this. Like I won't be able to. I can't see a way out of this. I'm really sorry. Like I kept apologizing. Like he's the one who's put it in without pain relief. But anyway, 
I kept apologising for wasting their time and for wasting a coil and for wasting medical NHSness. And I still feel guilty now. I've got so much like friggin' guilt from my body not reacting the way they want it to react to medical stuff. Like, I can't stop it from happening. It's not my fault. And yet I feel guilt for it. It's a whole big thing. Seriously, years of therapy need to happen. Um, but yeah, so I went back in. But again, no pain relief, no nothing. I mean, I can't barely talk at this point. I'm just like, please just get it out. And that's the only words I've got. Strip back now and again. But of course, I've already had a speculum put in me once and they're about to do it again. So they just put trauma on top of the other trauma. So what is already a very bruised area is just going poof. Bruised again. On top of it, it's like being punched twice in exactly the same place. And it's very sensitive down there. Um, the removal's quite quick. They just ask you to do a belly cough and poof, out comes the coil and that's it. And they put me back in my chair and I just left. Um, usually, I mean, I think they wanted me to stay in recovery for a bit longer, but I couldn't, I, I had to get, I knew I had to get out of there. I don't know why. My brain just said, we're leaving. Luckily, my friend said, oh, also, look, can we just leave now? He's like, well, I suppose, yeah. I'm just like, just get, get us out of here, put outside into the air. And I started to be able to breathe and the nausea kind of lifted a bit from air. And I've come home and, I mean... There's so much pain and so much, I don't know even how to, I don't, this is why I don't like gynecological stuff because I have vaginosis from it and the trauma and you just like, nobody touch me ever again, please. It just builds and builds and builds and each time Sometimes you'll get, I mean, this is a nice doctor. I've spoken to this doctor before. He's always been lovely. It was just, wasn't written down and I couldn't advocate for myself. I mean, I'm a 35 year old woman. I should be able to say, please stop. This is ridiculous. Give me some pain relief. But this is why I have the conversations and the appointments before, because once I get into an appointment, I, I you know, I have brain fog. I have, um, oversensitivities I get overstimulated by noise and sound and lights and smells so I make sure I have advocated for myself like way before that because by the time I get into the procedure I'm not going to be a human anymore and I have another appointment in March it's January now so I have an appointment in March to talk about what happens next but I just I don't like I have the physical side to get over physically get better but psychologically it's gonna take a while so that's what's happened i'll probably end the uh the vlog here because my my recovery is just gonna be more days in bed i don't think anything new is gonna happen now so it's just gonna be more days in bed and the long process of figuring out how to carry on with my life because i have no answers the camera came back clear. There's no like reason for my excess bleeding, which is what's happening. I'm bleeding too much. There's besides maybe it's a side effect from the implant, but the implant should have calmed down by now. So nobody knows what's wrong with me. That, that was uh, my hysteroscopy procedure slash surgery slash whatever they want to call it unpleasant no answers besides the fact that nobody knows what's wrong with me and coils are a very bad idea for my body okay how do you say goodbye with trauma bye